If you've clicked on this video hoping that I'm going to tell you the best web scraping package to use in Python, it's scrapey. It's that straightforward. So, but you know, help me keep my retention graph nice and high and flat and, and humor me for the rest because it's not always that straightforward. So I've been web scraping uh, professionally and um, personally for like over five years now, I suppose. That's kind of what I learned Python for. It's what I fell into. It's, it's what I built my whole channel around and, and what I do basically. Um, and I wanted to explain to you that there's just no, there's no one best tool. It's all about using the right tool for the right job and the right project that you are approaching. So it's up to you. But what I want to do in this video is give you a rundown of what I use now, what I have used and some thoughts on it and what I think you should be looking at using given certain circumstances. So having said that, there probably is no one best tool. I mean, why would you fire up Scrapey if you just need to make one request to a server and pass some JSON? You wouldn't do that. Although you can if you want to. It's like the web framework wars, except not quite on a high enough level, obviously. But you know, everyone's got their personal favorites. Everyone has like likes things for different reasons. So it's up to you to pick the right tool for the job and also the ones that you like working with the most. So I'll talk about Scrapey towards the end, but first we'll look at HTTP clients. Uh, this is what you're gonna use to make that request to the server to get that data back so you can then do something with it. The obvious choice is request, so use that for a very long time. Um, and there's a few others that are built around that too. And then there's HTTPX and AO HTTP, which are good for async. Now it's worth mentioning for all of the requests like libraries, they're generally all built on top of URL lib3. So if you're just making simple requests and all you need is some sessions, maybe some proxies, then it's definitely worth looking at just using URL lib3. I've used it in a few projects now and it's, it's pretty decent. It works just like you would expect it to. No hidden surprises, nothing fancy, it's just good. Of course, you can just use requests as well, which is built on top of it. The thing with requests though is that it's on a feature freeze, I believe, so there's nothing new is gonna come to it. And that kind of sets us a little back a little bit when we need more advanced web scraping features which is where I've moved on to using this next uh, library for almost all of my requests. And it also in, uh, integrates with Scrapey well too. So it's called curl CFFI, which is the Python wrapper for this library, which is a C library, which wraps around curl. It's all a bit confusing, but if you wanted to look through the source code, you'll see how it all, all fits together. And the great thing about this is that it builds on top of requests. So it does everything requests do. In fact, you import requests when you use it, but it will allow you to send browser like handshake information to a server. Now this is really important because one of the most common and basic approaches that people like Cloudflare will use to block you is based on your um, JA3 hash usually, which is your TLS handshake information based on the certain cipher suites and everything, the, the initial bits of information before you've even requested the data. And what requests and all the other libraries do is they send their information and you can't change that, which means, as I said, people like Cloudflare can spot you and see you and block you before you've even done anything. And that's regardless of whatever other headers you're using and maybe whatever proxies you're using too. So with this curl CFFI, which also integrates into Scrapey, it sends browser-like information. You just choose which one you want to impersonate. And so far it's been working really well for me. So definitely check that one out. So next is browser automation. Sometimes you just do need to use a real browser. And generally I go for Playwright. It's, they, they all kind of do the same thing, Playwright and Selenium. They work in very similar ways, but I just find the documentation for Playwright to be really, really good which means if I know want to know how to quickly do something I can find it really easy it also has a slightly better installation process in my opinion although selenium since version 4 has been dead simple too the only exception to this is when I want to use grid which is managing multiple instances of selenium over your server run on different threads uh, I use that it's running on my server now that I can connect to and then you can open up multiple browsers on your server and it's just a really neat and a really neat and tidy way to manage those Selenium instances, which Playwright doesn't have a version of. So now we've got the data, we wanna pass it. I almost never use Playwright or Selenium's built-in parser, although it does work and it works absolutely fine selecting all the elements. I will always take the HTML source and give it off to another HTML parser to work with, just in case I need to take Selenium out, put Playwright in, take Playwright out, put something else in. I find that process just much much easier to be a bit more modular. So I would probably recommend against using Beautiful Soup just because I don't feel like 
it's quite old now and it's not totally transferable so it has its own selector system you really want to learn how to either use css selectors or xpath uh, it's up to you which i use css selectors solely which is why i always recommend selectolax as my html parser it's built on top of a c library and it's super fast and I've never had any issues with it and it's fantastic. So I always recommend using that. It doesn't work with XPath though. So if you're looking, if you want to use XPath, you can use things like Parcel, which is Scrapey's HTML parser. You can take that out and you can use that separately. That works great too. One thing that I'm looking forward to in this space potentially, and maybe even the HTTP client space too, is some kind of Rust backed uh, Python uh, bindings and library there. So maybe we can use Rust to pass HTML easier and quicker. Well, with, although we've selected Axe, it's perfectly good as it is. Give us an extra option. And just to wrap up the quick three first things that we always use here output, um, which is usually going to be either a CSV, JSON file, or a database. Databases, I almost always use SQLite. I don't really feel the need to use anything else. And if I do, it's always Postgres. I've not really have got a lot of experience with document databases. Although, you know, if it works for you, it works for you. So not really a lot to say on this in this matter. So now I want to talk about this, what I'm going to call complete solutions. So that does, so Scrapey will fall into this. I'm going to explain to you why I think Scrapey is worth learning and why perhaps these ones aren't so there's a few new kind of complete solutions of what i would say come into the space recently one's called h requests and one's called botosaurus they both do very similar things and they both look really promising and like you know say that they can do all this stuff which is cool underneath all of this they are basically just uh, built on top of most of the tools i've just talked about curl cffi selectolax etc etc playwright they're all built on top of that now why i suggest possibly not learning these and obviously i don't want to to uh, say bad words about these because people have put a lot, a lot of work into these projects and they are fantastic but i personally don't use them simply because they have their own way of doing things and if you don't know what's going on under the hood when all of a sudden it doesn't work you can't fix it so if you know exactly how everything works, then using something like this is going to be fine because obviously you can figure out, hey, this has stopped working because of this reason. I need to update this. I need to do this. But these things, these packages are generally aimed at beginners, I think. So it kind of contradicts a little bit there. Whereas I think you're much better off building your own thing from scratch first so you understand how everything works and how everything fits together and then maybe looking at something like these other complete packages. Now there's a reason why I'm not including Scrapey within this because Scrapey has built everything itself. It has lots of ways to modify and change things. You can build your own middleware, your own pipelines, you can implement your own uh, backends, your own parsers, everything. You can do all of that. It will all work for you. Uh, and it's just building on top of these spider classes. Now, I think this really is the best way forward. And I know I've talked before in the past about how I don't use Scrapey so much. But I think I've changed that because a lot of the stuff that I've been writing recently, I've essentially been mimicking what Scrapey can do. So I've just gone ahead and rewritten it in Scrapey and utilized it. And also, obviously, it has all the built-in features that are really useful, exporting to a JSON file and CSV without even having to think about it, auto um, limiting the requests and all of that stuff, uh, and all that thing in the great stuff that's in the settings. It also has loads of add-ons and plugins that you can use to integrate with different things. Scrapey Playwright, there's Scrapey with Curl CFFI for impersonating, which I've been using recently, which is great. All of this good stuff. And that's why I would generally say Scrapey is where it's at. Now it does have a bit more of a learning curve. You do have to kind of understand how to scrape first and then start to build into it, but it's definitely worth it now, in my opinion. So this last section, I'm gonna talk a little bit about uh, paid options. Now these definitely have a place. I tend to use a few myself even um, because you know it's a con it's it's a, it's a way up it's a balance between how much time do you want to spend building something versus hey I'm just going to pay for this to be done for me take away the hard part so I can just focus on delivering and that's why things like uh, scraping B and and Zite and whatnot they're all kind of aimed more at businesses and professionals rather than people who are just learning and again if that fits your use case I think they are 
definitely well worth it takes away a lot of the headache a lot of the figuring out you can just move on and do whatever it is that you need to do and deliver whatever it is you said you're going to do so it's definitely worth having a look at those options but they're not a silver bullet they won't solve everything some will struggle on certain sites others won't it's all a bit of a figuring out act and working out what's best in your case so don't just sign up thinking all my problems are solved because they probably won't be however they will solve a lot of your problems so it's definitely worth checking out if you don't want to write everything else yourself and you're struggling and you just need it for a business purpose or whatever so to sum up, you need to be adaptable. You need to pick the tools for the right job. For example, if I know that there's going to be a little bit of blocking or Cloudflare or something like that, I'm straight in with Curl CFFI. If I don't need any of that, I'm just going to use requests or URL lib3 or HTTPX, whatever I feel like. I'm going to pass with select OLAX. I'm going to store it in a JSON file or a CSV to start with. I don't mess around with databases until I need to. Uh, and I'm always going to use proxies if I need to. Um, my link for proxies down below if you want to help me out, support the channel. If you need some good ones, I've got good links down there. Um, and also, yeah, if you need to leverage some paid solutions, just do it. Don't think about it. If it's worth it for your business case, just do it. But you need to make sure that you use a master and feel comfortable with everything that you use and pick and also how it works underneath. So you need to understand what's blocking you, why you're getting redirected, what's the cause of this, what's the cause of that. Because if you don't know that, you can't solve the problems underneath that will come up because web scraping changes, it's dynamic, things change all the time. You just have to get on with it and be adaptable.